After moving into a new house, a boy starts digging up the backyard as a hobby. He wants to be like his idol Indiana Jones, but when he finds a strange rock in the dirt, his life changes in a way no adventure movie could have ever predicted. When Tommy's parents moved into their new home on Magnolia Avenue, the boy could not believe his luck at the moment his mom opened the back door. The garden was so huge, it seemed like a small part, and to make matters even more exciting, there was an empty lot directly adjacent to theirs. Tommy did not mind that the garden was unkempt and neglected, it was just perfect for what he had in mind. See, Tommy's whole worldview had changed the day he first watched an old Indiana Jones movie with his dad. He liked the idea of having a secret identity, and it was easy to imagine that he could be the successor of Indiana Jones in the century. He was also good at finding things, and above all, he could totally believe that the ground below his feet just had to be filled with treasures and artifacts from another era. As the thoughts took root, Tommy began to prepare for the great adventure that he felt sure was just around the corner. He persuaded his dad to let him watch several more Indiana Jones movies and then asked him to borrow some tools from the garage. For his birthday, he got a hat that made him look just like Indiana, and then he began to get busy. His mom asked him to be careful when he went digging around as there could be snakes lurking in amongst the leaves, and Tommy promised to call her if he found anything like that. His dad joked that he would have to raise Tommy's allowance, that with all the extra labor he was doing, but mostly his parents were proud that he was plunging himself with such gusto in a hobby that totally absorbed his interests. Tommy's first finds were unremarkable, but he still insisted on photographing them for his field diary. That's right, Tommy was so serious about his new occupation that right from the start, he took a scientific approach and documented everything he dug up. Weekends felt way too short for all the work that awaited him, but as he persisted, the results got even more interesting. Even obvious junk was compelling in a way, but the most interesting object by far, the one that would get everyone in their town talking and send the police as well as a government agency to Tommy's back garden in Magnolia Avenue, was the rock that the boy dug up two weeks later. By now, he had an impressive collection of rocks, stones and mineral specimens, and he devised a way to use markers to demarcate those areas he had already explored. As he cleared more of the weeds away, he found a segment where the undergrowth was more sparse and the earth was somewhat darker in color than the surrounding soil. As he noticed these variances, Tommy felt sure that he would discover something really unusual here, and he was right. Tommy worked methodically, using the point of his spade to stab at the hardened crust of the soil. Once he had loosened the ground, he began to dig a narrow trench. After a few spadefuls of soil, he noticed that the darkened soil had only occurred on a thin upper layer. This did not discourage him. As he took another spade, something long and blackish sprang up inside the trench. Tommy took a cautious step back, remembering his dad's warning about the possibility of finding snakes in the backyard. For a moment, he stood staring down. The blackish thing lay absolutely still. Very cautiously, he prodded at it with the edge of the spade, but it did not move at all. With a mighty burst of effort, he loaded the item onto the spade and thrust it to the side, ready to step back quickly, if it was a snake. Then he shrugged as he recognized the blackish thing for what it was, a length of burnt-out robe. This too would be recorded in the field diary, but within a few more spadefuls, Tommy would uncover the greatest find of his career as Indiana Jones' successor. Just a few more spadefuls, and then he found the rock. It was unlike anything he had ever dug up before. First of all, he was really surprised by how heavy it felt. Much heavier than he would have expected of something that size. And then it was covered with fingerprints, well holes and dents that looked just like fingerprints, and also saw shiny bits of veins that seemed to be glinting inside it. Almost like gold. But was it gold? Tommy was confused. He showed it to his parents, and they found it interesting and puzzling too. But they were unable to come up with any answers. They looked up different types of stones on the internet, but nothing looked remotely similar. Tommy made a few notes in his field diary, but ended up without any real answers. What he didn't know was that the next clue to this mystery would come from a surprising source. The following Monday, he practically ran to school with his precious rock well secured in his backpack. As Tommy impatiently waited for his classmates to settle down, he bristled with excitement. 
Boy oh boy did he have something to show them. He had been looking forward to this moment since the weekend, and last night he could barely sleep as he rehearsed the opening for his show and tell. This morning he was the very first person of the household out of bed, and that in itself was a miracle. Waiting for the school bus had been torture, and when it finally appeared, did Mr. Jennings always have to drive like an old lady? Tommy was the second kid on, settling in his accustomed seat two rows behind the driver on the left-hand side. As usual, Murray Sims sat down beside him. Tommy was tempted to pull out the thing in his satchel. Murray was an even bigger geek than he was and would like that very much, but Tommy did not want to spoil the big reveal, so he kept quiet. Now it was almost showtime. Time to wow everyone in class. Not least of all Miss Daniels with his great treasure. He opened the satchel and groped around the brown paper bag it was in. There. Tommy heard a crinkle and felt its weight. He took it out and laid it down on the desk before him. The bag looked nondescript. Right, everyone, said Miss Daniels, and the whispering died down at once. With one hand clutching the paper bag, Tommy scanned the room looking at the assorted items that other kids had brought. Chelsea's bunny rabbit was attracting a lot of attention in its cage, but then Miss Daniels said, as she always did, Any volunteers to go first? Tommy's hand shut up. He had to go first. He couldn't keep it in anymore. Seeing that the three other kids also put up their hands, Tommy began waving his arm in an attempt to communicate to Miss Daniels how urgent it was that he went first. The teacher slowly gazed from left to right and said the magic words. Tommy, what have you got for us? Tommy all but ran to the front of the classroom. He took his item, his show and tell, out of the brown paper bag and then began to tell the class how he got it. The item passed from hand to hand and Tommy could tell that everyone was impressed. At first glance, the item looked like an ordinary rock, but then they inevitably noticed the shiny veins inside the rock, the little bits that glinted when you held them up at the light. Oh my, said Miss Daniels, this is interesting. And Tommy beamed at such high praise from his favorite teacher. But what she said next was not at all what he expected. Do you mind if I showed it to Mr. Hartley next door? Tommy was torn. Actually, he minded very much. The rock was his special treasure, and he was terrified of losing it. But on the other hand, he was also thrilled that his rock was important enough to warrant a second opinion. So he tried not to worry about it too much, which was very difficult for a boy his age. The day dragged on and Tommy was enormously relieved when just before the end of the day, Miss Daniels gave the rock back to him. She did not tell Tommy what Mr. Hartley said about the rock, and Tommy was too shy to ask. But that evening, his parents got a very odd phone call. The phone rang while everyone was seated around the dinner table. Tommy's dad made some remark about people phoning at such an inconvenient time, but nevertheless got up to answer it. Tommy heard his dad saying, Yes, that's right, he lives here. At the dinner table, Tommy stopped eating. Were they talking about him? A few moments later, Dad called Tommy to the phone. He clutched it to his ear and listened carefully as the deep-voiced stranger on the other side asked him questions about his rock. Have you got a magnet, Tommy? The stranger asked. Sure, he said eagerly. Good, said the stranger. Then I want you to do something for me. Take your rock and hold a magnet close to it. Tell me what happens. Tommy ran to his room, got out his magnet and brought it closer to the rock. Despite the rock's weight, he could feel the magnet tugging at it. Hey, that's very cool, he thought, just to be absolutely certain, because that was what a scientist like Indiana Jones would do. Tommy tried the magnet trick a second time with the same result. Then he went back to the phone and told the man on the other side all about what happened. Good boy, Tommy, said the stranger on the phone. Do you want to know why it does that? Sure, said Tommy. Well, said the man. That's because it's from a meteorite. It's packed with iron. Is that why it's so heavy? Tommy asked. That's right, said the deep-voiced stranger. Tommy, I need to speak to your dad again. Tommy's mind was reeling as he gave the phone back to his dad. His rock was special. He had known that and he was right. When dad got back to the dinner table, he explained what the conversation was about and what the family could expect over the next few days. They're going to be tearing up the garden, said dad, sounding perplexed. Who are they? Mom asked. The American Meteor Society, Dad replied. And you can thank Indiana Jones over there for getting us into this. But Dad was still smiling and Tommy could tell he was secretly bursting with pride. From the very next day, a police officer was stationed outside Tommy's home in Magnolia Avenue 
and two days later the team from the Meteor Society finally arrived. Tommy was in a daze as he watched them unloading their equipment and carrying it round to the backyard. He felt a pang of envy as he watched them through the window. It was taking them forever to get everything set up. Around 10.30, Tommy had another one of his bright ideas. I think those men must be a little thirsty, he said to his mom. I think I'm going to ask them if they want some coffee. His mom smiled. She knew very well that Tommy had been itching to get a little closer to all the excitement, the excavations. But she merely said, I'm sure they'll appreciate that very much. Tommy approached the Meteor Society people with all the confidence of Indiana Jones himself. One of the Meteor people who seemed to be in charge got to his feet and held out his hand to the boy. Good morning, you must be Tommy, he said. My name is Chuck Wayne and I'm in charge of this operation. Would you like a tour? Okay, said Tommy. That would be great. Chuck Wayne introduced Tommy to the entire team and then asked the boy to show him where he had dug up the meteorite. We've been looking for this one for decades, Mr. Wayne said. It was reported to us over 30 years ago, but no one ever found a fragment of it, Tommy. Not until you did. Tommy flushed with pride, then he asked, Do you think there are more meteorites in our backyard? We're pretty sure of it, said Chuck Wayne. But, Tommy's face fell, I've been digging for weeks and I've only found this one. That's because you didn't have one of these, Chuck grinned as he showed Tommy the device in his hand. It will go a lot quicker with a metal detector. Do you want to give it a go? Tommy did not need to be invited twice. Chuck Wayne showed him how to use the metal detector, but didn't expect what happened next. There was a beep as Tommy waved the instrument over the ground. Hey, why did it do that? He asked. Looks like you found us our first meteorite, Tommy, said Chuck Wayne. All in all, Tommy found six meteorite fragments. Seven if you counted the very first one that started everything. In his excitement, he totally forgot that he was going to ask the Meteor Society crew whether they wanted coffee, but fortunately his mom remembered. The Meteor Society people found 37 more meteorite fragments in Tommy's backyard, in the empty lot behind, and even two in the neighbor's garden. Tommy's adventure with the Meteor Society took up almost five whole pages in his field diary, and included the special booklet Chuck Wayne had given the boy to help identify meteorites. Chuck Wayne later sent Tommy a letter thanking him for his help and also shipped tickets for his entire family to visit the Meteorite Museum in Arizona. Tommy also got a financial reward, which helped pay for the next item on his wish list, his own metal detector. Tommy idolized Indiana Jones as a role model, not realizing that his own story was pretty inspiring as well. Maybe one day, someone would make a movie about the boy who dug up a meteorite in his own back garden. What a cool discovery! If you have a similar story about someone who dug up something amazing in the garden, tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear it. For now though, we're out of here. Catch you in the next one.